Audi, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, Volkswagen. These are some of the world's finest automotive brands, and they all have one thing in common. They hail from Germany. You see, Germany's automotive industry is a mammoth of an industry that produced 5.7 million passenger cars back in 2017, and it's been at the forefront of the world automotive industry since, well, the very beginning. In this video, we're going to explore how important the German automotive industry is today and how it became such an important component of the German economy. So let's begin by taking a look at the history. Back when humans used horses to get around and Germany had an empire, these men, Karl Benz and Nicolas Otto, two German engineers, were busy developing and improving the internal combustion engine. And they did a pretty good job of it. So much so that in 1887, Karl Benz fitted his design to a coach, which led to the modern day motor car. And it didn't stop there. The following year, Benz began to sell his creation, making it the first commercially available automobile in history. And it was a big deal. It signaled the beginning of what would become a vital part of the German economy, the automotive industry. By 1901, Germany was producing 900 cars a year, a far cry from today's figures, but at the time it was impressive. And with companies like BMW being founded in 1916 and Dalma Benz in 1926, it was clear that the automotive industry in Germany was taking shape, but it wasn't invincible. During the later years of the Weimar Republic, Germany's automotive industry was in poor health and was overtaken by the US with firms like General Motors and Ford Motor Company. And the bad news only got worse with the Great Depression, which saw Germany's auto industry enter a severe crisis. Despite the two large blows, however, Germany's auto industry did turn around and it came as a result of a policy known as motor... motor... Motorization, a policy instituted by none other than Adolf Hitler, which aimed to get Germans driving. You see, Hitler considered this transport policy as a key way to raise the standards of living for Germans. So along with his motorization policy and improvements to transport infrastructure, which also saw the construction of the infamous Autobahn that opened in 1935, Germany's automotive industry received a large boost and got back on track. After the Second World War, most of the auto factories in Germany had either been destroyed or severely damaged, but an incentive to import German goods had been created thanks to the London Agreement on German External Debts, signed in 1953. You see, as a result of the agreement, it stated that repayments of debt were only due while West Germany ran a trade surplus, and that repayments were limited to 3% of export earnings. This meant that Germany's creditors were incentivized to buy from Germany, as it would increase the debt repayments. This turn of events aided the German car industry's growth. And boy was its growth impressive. By 1955, Volkswagen had made 1 million Volkswagen Beetles, and 10 years later it passed the 10 million mark. From this point onwards, the news only got better. Skipping forward to the 1980s and 90s, the German auto industry began a phase of international expansion, with plants being bought in Asia, Latin America and the USA. Many of these factories still provide jobs to people in Mexico, Brazil, China and Turkey today. For example, Volkswagen set up a joint venture with Shanghai Automotive Industry Corporation in 1984 and began producing VWs and Audis in China. VW also acquired Seat of Spain in 1986 and Skoda of what was then Czechoslovakia in 1991. This allowed for VW to increase their market share significantly across Europe. At this point, it's clear to say that the German auto industry has gone from strength to strength. But what impact has all of this growth had on Germany today? In 2017, the German automotive industry employed a staggering 480,000 people in Germany alone. That represents 1.1% of all those employed in Germany, with plants dotted all over the place, from Mannheim, Munich, Nuremberg, Stuttgart, Dresden, Leipzig and Wolfsburg, and many, many more. 
all these factories have resulted in German cars making up 31.5% of the EU car market. And with competitors in countries like Spain, France and Italy holding sizable shares in their own domestic car markets, such figure is really impressive. However, it's not just size that matters. Yes, Germany ranks fourth behind China, the USA and Japan when it comes to the production of total motor vehicles. But it is also regarded as the most competitive and innovative car industry in the world. And with a staggering 49.3 billion euros invested in R&D in 2018, which is more than one third of the total global R&D spending in the automotive industry, it's easy to see why. This R&D spending is especially positive for Germany itself, since 50% of it is invested in Germany, employing 114,000 employees. In fact, since 2010, one in four of all new jobs in the German automotive industry has been in R&D. These figures show just how committed German companies are to remaining at the top spot of the global automotive industry as it transitions towards electric cars. Despite its position in the global car market today, German car makers, like many around the world, have encountered problems in recent years, perhaps opening yet another chapter in the automotive industry's history. Demand for German cars in the last couple of years has taken a hit. A trade war between China and the USA, and slower economic growth in China in general, is having a negative impact on Chinese car sales. And it's causing a few back in Germany to be concerned, especially since China is home to the world's largest auto market. And that's not all. Back in 2015, the Volkswagen emission scandal broke out. A scandal that saw the United States Environmental Protections Agency, or the EPA, issue a notice of violation of the Clean Air Act by the Volkswagen Group. The agency found that Volkswagen had intentionally programmed its diesel engines to activate their emissions controls only during lab testing, allowing for their vehicles to meet US regulations. But when on roads in the real world, their vehicles emitted 40 times more nitrogen oxides than was being registered in the labs. This scandal proved very damaging for Volkswagen, since 11 million of its cars worldwide were found to have been programmed in such manner. And as of June 1st, 2020, it's believed that the scandal has cost Volkswagen 33.3 billion US dollars. However, despite such scandal, Volkswagen has managed to remain among the top two manufacturers globally, selling more than 10.3 million units back in 2017. The German automotive industry has a very interesting history, and it has grown up to become among the largest and most innovative components of the global auto industry. It has weathered many storms in the past and has managed to come back stronger after each and every one of them. I'd expect German car manufacturers to be able to deal with the transition to electric powered cars relatively well, as they are well positioned for such transition to take place. They outspend their rivals when it comes to R&D, and their influence within Germany is large as to receive attention from the German government with regards to encouraging the growth of emerging sectors within the auto industry. And despite disruptive scandals starting in the mid-2010s and the slowdown in the growth of the Chinese auto market, German manufacturers remain the ones to beat as we uncover the next chapter of the world auto industry. Hi everyone, thanks for listening to another episode of Economics in Action. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the German automotive industry. If you like the content I produce here and would like to support the channel, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And take care. Bye.